Hello world, welcome back to CyberCrete and today in this video we are going to see how you can create a powerful keylogger using Python programming. So if you wanted to create something like keylogger and you know a bit of Python, then this video is going to be very much useful for you. But I am going to explain each and everything of our keylogger that I am going to create bit by bit so you can basically understand even if you don't know Python programming at all. I am very excited on creating this video so if you are also please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that like button so that I can keep on creating more videos like this. So without any further ado let's just start our video. Okay the first thing uh, that came into mind of creating a keylogger is what actually is keylogger. So keylogger is basically something that is basically going to record all your keystrokes. So for that we have to find any library. Is there any library in Python that can help us do so? So uh, I looked up and I have found the library that is basically responsible for grabbing all your keystrokes as well as your mouse too. But here in this case we are just going to record the keyboards. So I am basically going to import that particular statement. So let's first just try to create a very simple keylogger which is just going to record our keys and nothing else. So the first few lines that you are seeing here in my code is basically importing some of the things that we are going to use later inside this video. But for now we are just going to have a look at very basic functions that I have created here. So here if you see uh, what I have done. First I have imported some libraries then I have created this function grab keys. So uh, the work of this function is just to print my keys and nothing else. So uh, here we have created the function grab keys. We are passing the key to this function and then it is basically printing our key. That is it. It is just printing whatever key that we are currently using. So the trick come here. So I have imported pineput.keyboard as keyboard. And here I am creating its object. So if you are familiar to programming, you might know what uh, an object is and how we create it. So here uh, we are basically creating an object of class keyword and we are using its function which is known as the listener. So listener is basically responsible for listening to all the keys that you are going to press on your system. So then it, we have to tell when someone is pressing the key, what action should I take? So should I just print it or should I do just nothing or whatever action you want it to take. So here I wrote on press is equal to grab keys. So on press so as soon as someone press the key just do this function. So this the function name is grab keys and we are simply calling this grab key here. And the grab key is just printing that key. So what actually is happening we are creating the object we are telling it to listen to all our keys and whenever someone is going to press the key just print it. So till here we have just created this but we have never called. We have never called our function. So uh, this thing you should keep in mind. And then if someone of you might have a uh, bit of knowledge of python you can see we use with to open files or any streams. So here we are just opening the stream of listener class and then we are so here we have created the object so listener is now our object we are opening our listener and listener our join is going to join our code so that it basically starts listening because we have never called it so in order to call first of all we have to open our listener so that it is now opened now i am ready to listen what you have to do now it is basically joining and then uh, our keylogger is basically going to work so the first thing uh, that we are going to do is to just simply run this code and let's see how it is basically going to work So now let's try to run this code. So now it is basically listening for and it is basically waiting for us to press any key and then it is going to print it on our terminal screen. So uh, I have opened another terminal where we are basically going to type some stuff so we can see it the so that we can see the reflection inside this terminal. So if I write hello at e double l o hello there I am as you can see as soon as I am typing uh, things here, they are automatically getting printed here. So I wrote hello. So it was in capital letter because I pressed shift. So here you can see that key dot shift. It is telling that he pressed the shift button first and then he started typing this thing. But as you can see, uh, okay, let me just close it. So 
in order to close the keylogger you can just press ctrl z which is responsible for closing any ongoing processes so now it is stopped and you can see our keylogger is working perfectly fine whatever keys uh, we are basically passing to it it is just simply printing it so it is doing the job but as you can see it is going to print uh, things line by line and it is not good practice and it is not even readable because we need to basically uh, use this uh, as a readable format we cannot just keep on seeing all the lines of the code and then we have to try to figure out so somehow we have to basically convert this character into a string or sentence of line if you are from programming background you can basically understand what i am trying to say so we have to convert this characters like single single character and we have to basically add them to basically create a string so that we can basically read and get some meaning out of it so in order to do that uh, what we can do we have to just simply use any log variables so log variable so let me just uh, uncomment this code so here we are creating a log variable so log variable is going to keep on adding the characters that we are basically passing to it so we are passing a then it is going to uh, add a then we are passing b then a and b are both in, uh, going to be added together then c a b c so it is going to keep on adding our character together and it is going to convert them into the string so the first thing that we have to do we have to initialize this variable here so we have initialized this log variable here and then we are basically going to use this log variable to keep on adding uh, things to our log variable string so the first thing this is a global variable because whenever we are going to call this grab function uh, this is going to reset our log uh, variable so if you are going to set log here is equal to empty string then every time it is going to be empty string so here we have to create a global variable so that uh, the changes can remain constant throughout our entire program so i have done that then uh, when you are going to use global variable you have to basically say that this is global log or else it is going to create a local variable log which is just going to be used inside our grab key function and then here we are using try and catch so let me explain you why we are using it uh, so if i just simply remove okay let me just explain like that so here uh, let's first read it then try to understand why we are using the exception so here i am saying log which is basically empty at the very first is equal to log plus a string key dot car so key dot car is basically going to convert our character that you can see i j into a character format because if you are not going to use this these are basically objects these are not basically characters the key that you are pressing is basically considered as an object so you cannot basically add character or string to an object so we are basically type casting it so first of all we are getting the character and then we are again type casting it to the string so that we can add a string and a string together to form a meaningful sentence but there is an case like here you can see we are getting key dot shift key dot space and things like that uh, these are not basically the character these are basically uh, you can say special type of keys so whenever user is pressing any special type of keys uh, it is not able to convert it into character format so there the program is going to throw exception so for there we are using this accept function which is going to catch this exception and when uh, the exception is basically caught we are then we are just simply basically uh, adding it uh, adding the name of the key that the user have pressed inside our log variable so here we are doing log plus is equal to means it is basically equal to log is equal to log plus and this statement we are just using an space so that we can have more or readability and then a string of key we are just uh, converting this key dot shift into a string and nothing uh, complicated here and then we are adding a space after that so that it is more like readable and then we are simply printing the log as we have done it before and rest of the code basically remains the same so if you see uh, the rest of code is basically the same so now uh, let's clear this screen and now let me just rerun our code again we have done a great job so now here you can see it is not printing character by character it is printing uh, our entire string every time it is going to keep on adding our string it is going to print it like that but again if you see here it is not so human readable key dot shift key dot space what if we can just convert this key dot space into space key dot shift 
which basically stands for just uppering our character to our uppercase and we can just make it more human readable so that we can basically understand but by this uh, reading here we can see we have done space then a then space then great then space then job so let's now make it human readable so if you, we pay attention this uh, key dot space and any key that special key that we are pressing is going to happen in this accept block so we have to come up with an algorithm that is going to make use of this inside our accept block so let's move on and let's I try to basically uh, create it in such a way that it is basically going to handle all this key dot space and any special key that the user are basically going to press so let me just close this clear the screen and let's go to our next code statement so here if you are going to pay close attention first of all we have created a log variable which was already there then we have created a caps variable so you are going to understand this caps variable in a bit but for now you can understand it we are going to use this caps variable to uh, say our program that now the caps lock is basically on so uh, when you press caps lock we don't want to see the key caps lock we want to just see the end result what happens after pressing key, uh, caps lock uh, the cases basically start uh, to change so if it was lowercase it became it, it start becoming uppercase or if it was uppercase it start becoming lowercase so we are going to use that for that and count variable is going to say you are going to see in a bit when uh, we are basically going to implement the caps lock function so uh, till here we are basically told uh, these are global variable that you have to use and case is equal to false so this we don't need so sorry my bad so now again we are inside our try and here we are saying if caps is true which means if the user have basically pressed caps lock then what we have to do then instead of just adding the key as it is just swap the case so if it was in lowercase just make it uppercase if it was in uppercase just make it lowercase and vice versa so these things we are doing here so when a user is basically going to press caps lock and then he is going to type something then whatever case he is going to type is going to be uh, swapped like uh, after pressing shift what happens the uh, case basically change so you are going to see in more detail when we are implementing it and if it is not the case if the caps lock was not printed just simply print it as it is then we are inside our exception so in exception first of all we are checking if the we are again converting the key into a string so that we can basically easily compare them and then we are checking if we have pressed key dot space which is basically means we have pressed space bar then just log plus is equal to space so we are just adding a space here nothing else so the code is going to be more and more readable now and here we are just saying if the user have pressed shift key just pass because whenever a user is going to press shift automatically our code is basically going to create uh, the capital letter out of it if it was any smaller and if it was any smaller then it is going to create the lower version of it so that is basically handled here but we don't want to see key dot shift printed all the time so here we are saying if a user has pressed this just pass do nothing and then again one more interesting feature that i have added is whenever user is going to press backspace instead of pressing uh, seeing showing me the backspace just show me what uh, is the end result so we are just decrementing one very value from the very last so what happens when we press backspace for one time the last character is basically going to be decreased so we have written this logic log start from the very beginning and go till the second last or the very end and just take that much of a string and do nothing so here we are just basically removing our last character so if i try to explain you what i mean so if i uh, okay just let me open my python and let me write a string so let's uh, t double l o a is equal to h e double l o so you can see a is now hello if i want to just delete the last character i can say a start from nothing which basically means that it start from the very start and go till the second last and then okay and then here when i print you can see that we are getting h e l l which just means hell 
we are not getting hello or things like that so let me just stop this code clear the screen and let's move on to our code and here uh, comes the logic of our caps lock so whenever user have pressed caps lock turns the caps value to true so here uh, we are saying that now the caps lock is basically on and then uh, our upper try function is going to basically create or basically we are going to up swap the cases whatever case the it was already then here in our else we are doing the same it will be same but again you can see count plus is equal to one we have uh, declared the count as zero so now count has become one so this we are doing because once uh, user have again pressed the caps lock how we are going to know that uh, again he's going to press caps lock then also it is going to say caps is equal to true but we don't want that case to happen that is why we are using count so counter is going to become one once uh, the user have uh, pressed the caps lock for the very first time but if he is going to press it for the second time what it is going to do this means caps lock is off he is going to turn it off so here we are checking if it is greater than one means uh, it is basically two then again switch back our caps to zero and make our case is equal to false means uh, the caps lock things is now no longer uh, basically suited so here we are saying count is equal to zero again we are switching our count to zero and then caps is equal to false means the caps lock is no longer available and like this you can keep on adding features if you use some of your brain and i would encourage you to add some features of your own and then here we have the else if function where we are specifying what happens when we uh, press basically enter key so here i have specified when we press enter key just change the next line so slash n to change the new line and if none of this happened uh, just press that key uh, that the user have pressed and at the very end we are just printing the log so rest all of the code uh, remains basically the same so now uh, let's try to run our code so if i am going to write run the code again and let's start typing h e double l o hello okay so now it is working perfectly fine now just try to uh, use the caps lock so caps lock is on w o r l d so you can see each and everything that we have printed inside our terminal is going to be printed here nicely fully human readable so till now here everything is good but we also want to add the feature of sending a mail or doing something with this code we just don't want to store or keep on printing like this so now let's move on and try to implement uh, printing the log not in this format in something more better format so let me just uh, stop the code and let me just comment this code out so here is basically our uh, last part of our code that uh, we are going to write so as the above we have seen every line of code basically remains same we don't want to do the change because the function of grab key is working perfectly fine we have done all the testing uh, it is basically uh, doing its task perfectly well so we did not make any changes inside this code of our exception and try so this remains same but the only thing that we have removed is printing the log because we don't want it to print log line by line but we want to generate a report like after every let's say four minute or five minute just print whatever user had printed till now because user is not going to print everything second by second so we have to create another function which i am basically going to call as report and this function is going to report us what the user have printed but here we are going to introduce you to the new concept that is basically multi-threading so just try to understand in this way once this uh, listener is started it is started listening to what keys we are going to press and it is going to keep on listen till we have stopped this program but we want to send a mail or we want to basically write it to the file then how we are going to do it so here the concept of multi-threading is going to come into action so in multi-threading you can just divide your program let's say two functions uh, you have basically two functions and you can just uh, give one thread to one function one thread to one function both of them are going to run parallelly so that is uh, what we are going to use here we are going to listen on one thread and send report on one other thread so let's say uh, this is basically the listener is, is going to listen the uh, whatever user is going to press so let's say after uh, it have gathered for five minutes it have gathered so much of text then uh, this thread is, is going to say hey now i'm going to send this report back so this thread now send the report back 
but even though when it was sending the thread to us as an email this thread was again listening to what keys the user were pressing so this is how it is basically working and here uh, just to use threading we need to import threading so i have basically imported threading in the beginning as you have seen and then we here we are printing log and again we are resetting the log because we don't want to see uh, again and again like uh, if you, I have wrote 10 line at the first 5 minute and I am going to write again next 10 line in again uh, 10 minute then I don't want to see the previous line so just uh, because we don't want to see the previous thing we are just resetting our log to nothing and then here we are using the concept of recursion so many of you might have think oh recursion why recursion where I am going to basically use it so here is the place that you are going to use the recursion so here we are uh, calling the threading function and inside threading function we are calling the timer so which asks us for how much time uh, I'm going to wait and then what function I'm going to call once it is done. So here it is told you have to wait for 8 seconds and then you have to call your itself because you are the one who is going to send the code, log the code, print the code or whatever you want to do. And then we are saying timer.start. Now the timer is basically going to start and it is going to send uh, the code after every uh, five minutes or eight minutes or so and then again the rest of the code remains the same the only change we have done inside listener before even starting the listener we are calling this function so this is going to start very first so it is going to uh, be started even before our listener started listening and then it is going to join our code we are doing this uh, because you might think why not listener or join at the very first because we are not using threading in listener we are using threading in our report and that is why we are first calling report because report knows that i have to wait for eight seconds and then i have to uh, start execution again but the uh, listener function does not understand this so we are first calling uh, our report function then the listener so uh, let me just first comment this mail out uh, we are going to see this mail function which is basically going to send the mail to us once the keystrokes are basically recorded and let's clear the screen and now let's see how the things are basically done here and you are going to see the result after every eight seconds so if i simply run the code again uh, okay i've skipped the code this time and now let's try to run the code fuck oh gee okay let's go to rock we do so as you can see it is going to print everything in order and it is going to forget what the text we have printed earlier and both the printing so here you can see i am printing nothing inside uh, my grab key function everything is basically printed inside my report function so that is it so as soon uh, as you can see i have printed nothing that is why it is simply printing empty space so this is going to uh, continue but let's just stop so till here you can see that the code is working perfectly fine but we want to add the feature of sending the mail or basically uh, log into the file so that we can just come up to the system and basically take uh, just use the pen drive from other people computer and just create the text whatever the site here visited but for now uh, we are going to simply implement this send mail function so if you don't understand uh, the send mail function that i have basically written here i have basically uh, explained this uh, mail function inside my other video where i have basically taught you how to send a spoof email to the user so that you can basically send a spoof email and make fool of him and by that process also you can basically send this key logger using the spoof email and trick him to download this python program and if you want to know how to implement uh, sending a screenshot or sending a small video recording to you just make sure to write down into the comment section and i will be happy to help you and i will show you how you can basically send the screenshot as well as a small videos recording of their screen to you so that you can have the better and clear understanding of what the user are currently doing so that is what we are going to implement so instead of just uh, sending a report what we can do we can just call our mail so here i'm basically going to call my mail so uh, what i can do the easiest thing i can simply copy the code from here and i can basically call it here and 
voila this is done now it is going to send a mail to us after every eight second but getting mail on every eight second is that okay i think it's not so what we are going to do instead of sending the mail of every eight second you can just use whatever time that you want to send the mail but uh, let's say it's one 20 minutes so you can either hardly program it or you can use some variables or you can basically use some input to change this number of time you want uh, to delay before sending a mail then uh, the only thing that is left here is to define this variables email password and message so uh, what we can do we can just simply pass this here email password and message and okay so i think the best way will be to create the global variable of each of them so something but not the message so here uh, the thing that we have to change inside this is this message because we have to send the log so here we have to specify that we need to send the log because log is our message not the message message so here we have to basically define our email so the email where you want to send and the email from uh, where you want to send as well as the receiving email both are going to be same in this case so you can just type any random email uh, at the rate anything dot com as and then here you can basically identify the password whatever password that you want or you have and once that is done you are going to save the code and you are going to run it then it is going to send the mail to you after every two minutes and it is going to uh, report you as soon as the keylogger is basically started so this was it for this video and i hope that you must have enjoyed this video because i have enjoyed too in creating this video so thanks for watching if you want more awesome videos like this please do subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you can never miss any future updates and without any further ado let's just say bye bye